Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another edition here at the Legacy Wealth Talk Facebook Live, the, week, the, the weekly Facebook Live that we bring to all of our, our viewers all over the world. Grief, heartbreak. Are you suffering from grief, heartbreak in any area of your life? A failed relationship, maybe, failed business? If so, then you're in the exact right place today. Uh, we have a team of experts here. Um, who are going to be able to shed some light on this, uh, this, this concept of grief and how to handle it and how to move forward in our lives. Uh, I'm joined today. So actually, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Shez, Shez Hanif. I'm the lead coach and founder of Guidance Coaching. We help people take their lives, take their lives to the next level. And we specialize in helping men uh, rescue their relationships, more specifically their marital relationships. So if there's any men out there, uh, suffering grief in their relationships, in their marital relationships, reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to serve you. I'm joined, as I said earlier, by an expert panel today. We have a special guest uh, who is an internationally sought after speaker, Birgit Tan. She's also a best-selling author and also a grief recovery and life success coach. Welcome, Birgit. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for having me in your panel today, Chef. You're most welcome. It's an honor and a privilege to have you here. And we're also joined today by our resident panelists. Uh, so we have Nomsa, who is our love harmonist. Um, and she's also, um, she has her own relationship agency. She helps uh, bring people, couples together. Um, and we also have Tarani. And Tarani, as you all know, is a property developer, a very successful one at that and also a wealth coach, as, as well as being a successful author as well. So thank you uh, once again to our panel for coming. And if I can start uh, with yourself, Birgit, and ask you, like, how can we, you know, how can we keep going, right, when, when, when all is lost and there's no hope in life? Um, so I'm talking very generic terms here. Uh, we've, you know, we've obviously got... Um, Nomsa and Tarani to, to talk from a relationship and a business perspective, but if you can talk, um, you know, about, about grief, the concept of grief and how, um, you know, how we can keep going, um, when, you know, when, we, when we're suffering. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Yes. Um, well, the first thing is when we are grieving for whatever reason it is, when things just seem so dark and so bad, um, what we want to remember is that it's a chapter in our book of life. It's, a, it's not our whole book of life. You, we might be having a really, really bad moment right now, but our life is like book. And um, it's like a book, a book of our life. And this is a dark <coughs> chapter in our book of life. And actually, if you ever read a book, uh, um, a story book, a book of, uh, of a story of a life, for the book to be interesting, we need to have good chapters and dark mm -hmm. chapters. Otherwise, it's kind of boring. So it is, this is just part of our life. It's a dark chapter in our book of life. And it's not our, our whole book. And it's completely up to us on what we're going to write on the next chapter and on the next chapter. And knowing that it's some chapters will be brighter and full of fun and full of joy and full of play. And some chapter will be the dark nights because we, um, it's, it's only a circle of life to be able to have nights and days. If you have days only, then it, or nights only, that's, never, that's not a good thing. And then the other thing that I, I encourage people to remember um, when we're having a tough time, when we feel like we're having failure, is to remember what Thomas Edison say. Thomas Edison is the person who um, discovered electricity he has what people say 10,000 failures. And actually when, um, when um, the news reporter asked Edison, how could you even tolerate 10,000 failures and did not get discouraged, Edison said, I never have a failure. It's all feedback. Mm. It's not failures. Um, it, it, it's, it's only a failure if we decide to quit. 
Yes. If we don't decide to quit, it's all great feedback for us on how we're going to change, on how we're going to change course and how we're going to improve the next time until we uh, become successful. And, and success is uh, for everybody is different. Um, uh, you have a panel, I think, last week or the week before that says, uh, we have, um, you know, society give us definition of success, but mm. actually everybody has... Uh, everybody want to have their own definition of success and so failure is when we decide sometimes it just feels like failure definitely <laughs> sometimes it's just miserable and that's when we remember want to remember that well we have this is a, a this is a very strong feedback that we have right now and at the same time we can we can decide to to change course and this uh, and write something different and the other thing is um we want to remember also when we, everything seems to be so dark and so lost that for us to see um, a really beautiful rainbow, at least here in the United States, um, for us to see the, one of those double rainbow, the so gorgeous rainbow, we need to have a storm or a rain beforehand. Otherwise, we don't see lovely rainbows. I mean, if, if we, want, it, we need to have a lovely, storm, a, a strong, dark storm, and then we will see lovely, beautiful, sometimes even double rainbow if we remember to look up. If we don't remember to look up, we won't, we won't remember, uh, we won't see it either. But if we remember to look up, we um, will see them. And the last thing is when it's really tough, when it's just the, the world feels just so cold and, and cruel and lonely, uh, we do want to ask, to ask for help, to ask for support. That's what friends for. And we also want to allow ourselves to feel bad at times it's very normal and it's very natural to cry and it's actually good to, for us to cry and uh, i always say um tears for our uh, nourish our heart like uh, the rains nourishes the, the trees and the plants and so we want to be able to allow ourselves nowadays in the personal development time um, <laughs> with everybody online and internet everybody trying to look good and be strong and yeah i'm happy all the time right but that's not our natural natural state we our natural state is up and down and when things happen we want to allow ourselves to feel sadness uh, if it is something saddening us to feel anger if it's something anger us and then decide that um to that this is not our whole book and this is a dark chapter in our life and it's up to us on how we're going to have our next chapter excellent thank you uh for sharing that valuable uh, information there i love some of the things that you uh shared with us there, um, especially the classical quote from uh, Thomas Edison about uh, no such thing as failure, it's all feedback. Um, I think that um, something that uh, I've kind of uh, realized um, since uh, over the last couple of years or so with my own business is that people can get over grief better when they try to face it head on. Um, and, um, I love the point you made there about it being okay to cry confiding in people. These are great nuggets. And um, I'd like to maybe add to that as well, also about maybe trying to move forward in your life, maybe going on a holiday, maybe actually looking at, you know, other areas of your life, like your health, your fitness, um, you know, which will help you to kind of start building momentum rather than sitting in that sad corner, dwelling on the sadness. Um, would you say that's, that, that's a good way to try to tackle the, the problem head on by identifying other areas of your life and trying to progress in those? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, one thing that I teach is, um, my clients um, is to, uh, to have gratitude, to practice gratitudes on things that still going well, because sometimes it's very easy for us to focus on the, um, the miserable part. And that's, the, you know, that's training for us from um, when, when we, we were still uh, living in the wild to focus on the bad part so we can survive. But nowadays, you know, we want to focus and, and, and be grateful, be grateful for things that still going well in our life um, to say, okay, what is it that um, that's still going on well in my life? Well, I, I, I still have... Um, I still have a, a roof off of my head. Um, I still have clothing. Um, I'm you know, we, uh, anybody that watch this online definitely still have access to internet. And so we want to be grateful, and that will allow us. It's been shown, um, as you uh, you would have known, um, it's been shown that gratitude leave our uh, actually change the biochemicals in our body, and it helps yeah. us to face it head on 
as well as to lift us and help, uh, help us move on and has a good perspective um, and be able to, um, what the other, one other things is um, when we're having something bad happen, to remember what Napoleon Hill says, that every adversity, every heartbreak, every failures has in it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. And when we face it head on, have gratitude, it will allow us to calm down and be able to look for that seed of good, which is the learning and sometimes even more that, than we gain from our so-called failure. Excellent, excellent. Some golden nuggets there that you've shared with us. And um, I hope that our viewers will be really be, be, be able to take on board some of the advice that you've shared with us. Thank you so much. Um, if I can move on to Nomsa, um, our love uh, harmonist, um, Nomsa, can you shed some light on the concept of grieving um, from a relationship perspective? Because um, I know obviously you have your own um, agency, you have the Hope Spring Eternal Introduction Agency, which helps to bring people together. Um, so from your perspective, like, you know, how, you know, how do, how do people grieve um, when they're in relationships? Um, I'm going, <clears throat> I am going to uh, back up uh, Beckett's statement that when things are going wrong, um, don't be discouraged. Um, don't be discouraged. You know that everything is going to work out just fine. And also, um, break up can be a, a trial as well. It's a, it's a specific process. When you grieve, when you are grieving after a relationship broke up or after any death or whatever is the process, but it can also be a betrayal. Uh, why it can be also a betrayal? Because it's where you have to let go of the attachment uh, to the people, to the places and the possibilities that we have lost in that process, the, the possibilities that I would have got, uh, uh, maybe when you enter a relationship, you see you are with your man, you want to get married, but when the, re the relationship ends, those possibilities are gone. And when you are with your woman, you want, you want to marry a woman and then the relationship ends, those possibilities are gone. And those are the things that, uh, that will hurt the most that you have to let go of those possibilities. But sometimes it can be really, really hard because we can refuse to accept that situation, which is really, really tough. Sometimes we, we can accept it and uh, the process and the feelings of that grieving can be uh, misunderstood. With our feelings, we can misunderstand misunderstood the process because some days you will feel good some days you will feel bad so and then it will stop again and then start again uh, that it is very very important for you to understand the process of recovery because right now you've let go of the possibilities and sometimes you're, you're accepting it sometimes you can refuse but it, it is very important to understand how your mind works because when my relationship broke up, there was a time where I, I went to a psychology. I went to three psychologies. I had 10 weeks with this one. I had 10 weeks with that one and 10 weeks with that one I'm trying to figure out about what they were doing they were doing the work for me. They were not telling me how I need to work with my mind. They were triggering my mind for me. When we have a chat, they will trigger my mind. And then I would start realizing, actually, this is where I have problems. But then when I go home, I will start having problems again. It will start over, over again in that grieving. So for you to be aware for the conscious mind, how it works. Then be aware of your unconscious mind, how it works. Then be aware of your psychological body because your psychological body is the machine. It gets told what to do. So if the body gets told that shut down, it will shut down. Then the grieving starts, it will start producing the chemicals they into your brain. Then you start, that's where the process, you start having depression. But if you can control, learn how to control your body and control your feelings, uh, 
because when you, when you go to the unconscious mind is where you are downloading everything you are telling your mind you can keep this you can keep this you can store this so if you learn how to work your mind you can tell your mind this is the the memory that i don't want to keep this is the memory that i want to keep and also when you are facing uh, those feelings that uh, when you are aware of those feelings that are coming to you whether they are bad or not bad you need to face them. You need to deal with them because if you ignore them, they will come back. So know how to deal with your unconscious mind, your conscious mind, your body, your machine, basically. Once you know how to deal with that, you will, you will know how to deal with grief. Whether it's, it doesn't matter whether you've been with someone for three days, whether you've been with someone for nine months or 20 years, the grieving is the same because is you are letting go of the possibility. Some people say, how can someone who has been with someone for three days or 20 years, the grieving be the same? It is the same. Your heart, your betray, it, it will feel like a betrayal, it will feel like the other person has betrayed you. So it goes deep. So as long as you learn how when the next time you go to a psychologist, they, they, they work on you, ask them to tell you, to, to give you the work, to do it practically with your mind. That really, really works. And to cry, like Bridget was saying, crying, crying, it helps. For me, if you see me happy, if you see what happens in my bathroom, I cry a lot. When I'm faced with feelings that are, are uncomfortable, I cry, I confront them. When I confront them, I let them go. I say goodbye to them. Then I feel relieved. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for that. I really uh, can relate to some of the things that you shared. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's, there, there's, a, there's a great point about the crying and um, Birgit also touched upon this, that it's okay to cry. And nowadays uh, we live in, uh, the modern times that we live in, uh, mm. you know, there's there's so much projection about being tough and macho and facing things head on, which is correct. But actually just having that moment of self-grief can be uh, such a good way to release a lot of the strain, a lot of the tension. Um, so I, I guess it's about balance, isn't it, really? You don't want to be sulking in that corner, crying to yourself mm. endlessly without reaching out to someone for help. Because uh, that can take you in a real downward spiral. Mm. But then at the same time, you don't want to bottle it all inside as well and say, oh, no, I'll get through this. I'll get through this. But, um, you know, you, you need some form of release, don't you? And, um, mm. you know, I was working with a client recently. Um, so she was uh, so she works for a um, sort of a global um, corporation in the U.S. And she went through a quite quite a painful breakup um, where someone walked out on her and um, he ran off with someone else and, um, and she, I mean, we worked together and we, you know, we, we tried to kind of take a really holistic approach, um, looking at the different areas of her life and seeing how we can, um, get her maybe to move forward through exercise, through gratitude, through, um, visualization. Um, and one thing that really helped her a lot was actually going on holiday. She just, you know what, forget everything, forget all this. She got her daughters and they just went for a trip around the world. And I know not everybody can afford that, right? But it, it can work for you depending on your own circumstances. It doesn't have to be a trip around the world. You could go for, a, you know, just a, a walk around the block. It could be a, a tour around your local town, whatever. And when she came back, she found that she was a lot, um, you know, a lot more relaxed about the whole breakup situation and ready to move forward with her life. So, um, yeah, I think there's some real good, um, some real good uh, experiences that um, we're, you know, we're getting to share here with our with our viewers. So thank you for that, Nomsa. Um, if I can come to Tarani and um, ask you maybe to shed some light on grief from a business perspective. Mm -hmm. People, they're involved in investments. Yes. Uh, yourself, you're a property developer. I'm sure there's been um, lots of, you know, ups and also lots of downs of grief as well. So maybe you can share what grief means from a business perspective. In the business perspective, grief would mean a loss you know, and um, let's put into example so we can understand it and see it more clearly. When at the beginning of my property investments journey, I'm very naive, I trust everyone. So I signed up with the property mastermind class and that cost me like 20, over 20,000 pounds. 
and I trust everyone. So my mentor introduced me to other investor. And I, because of that, I thought that everyone mean well and always looking for your, look out for your benefit. But one thing in business, you need to be understand that everyone look out for themselves. That's the big key wake up call. So he introduced me to other developer because he also got commission out of me. And because of that, you know, introduction, I lost another 40,000 pounds. So all together, like 60,000 pounds when I just first started, I maxed out all my credit card, you know, allowance and all my saving. So it's way bad time for me. I'm stressed out. You couldn't sleep over the night and everything. Eventually, I'm get over it. How do I get over it? The first thing that I think to myself is you just have to accept that you make a loss. You know, so the first thing for the grief is to accept it, that this is the fact you make a loss and you learn to live with the consequence. What can you do with it? Deal with it as it's come. And like you said, I'm crying my eye out. I'm stressful. I think of the worst, but we need to be able to recognize as well. Is this emotion or is this the facts? It's, it's just a survival mechanism that our body, you know, cry, stress, everything. It's just helping us to cope. But we need to aware of this, that this is emotion. Whatever you thought of the worst is not true. It's just your emotion. And you need to recognize that the fact is you make a loss. What's the consequence? You make 60,000 pound loss. You live with some liability instead of asset. That's the facts. So you live with it and deal with it as it's come. And another thing that I learned for myself is give yourself a break. You know, we always forgive our other people, but we always be too harsh on ourselves. We only human being, no one is perfect. You are allowed to make a mistake. And those mistakes, people asking me, how did you make that sort of mistake? You only make a decision based on your knowledge and experience at that moment. Know what you know now, of course we are wiser. We make a better decision. But back then, that's what you make decision. Live with it, so what? You know, that's the facts. And don't live in the past, like Bridget saying, don't live in the past because failure is not a failure, it's the feedback. Like what you said, right? Failure is the feedback. But if you stop trying, then that's become your permanent failure. Everything happened for the reason, like Nomsa said. And we might not know at that moment in time when you will hit the rock bottom, you might not know you think God punished you, whatever reason, you might not know why this happened to you. But eventually when you get out of that dark hole, you realize that, okay, this happened for me next time to do more due diligence, to learn more, to be more careful. It's always the reason that things happen in your life. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for that, Tarani. There's always a reason. Yes. Um, and, you know, I've had so many failures as well, but it's um, like uh, going back to what Birgit was saying, that it's, it, it's all feedback, right? And it helps to make us grow, you know, as, uh, as, as people and, um, you know, it, it was because of um, so-called or what I perceived as failures in my life, mm. coach today and, and, and able to share um, my knowledge and my intuition and the things that I've learned from my mentors and, um, you know, my uh, teachers with other people and helping them to mm. issues in their life. So if I look at it just from a purely personal perspective, um, my failures in my finances, in my relationships, um, in my, um, uh, you know, spirituality, all these so-called perceived failures have led to me now being a means of bringing success in other people's lives. So had that not happened, I wouldn't be here today. Exactly. It goes back to, I guess, what Virgil was saying as well about um, it's, it's all feedback, right? So we, um, you know, we have to realize um, that there is some good in it. Um, and I think the, uh, the quotation from... Um, there was a quotation you mentioned earlier, I can't remember who it was from, about the, um, the adversity um, uh, having a seed of benefit. I love that. 
Um, and I think you know it's 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 so true that um, uh, you know there's 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 good, but we we sometimes see the good later. You know, we look back at all oh, right that failure um, what actually helped me to be the person that I am today. Had I not gone through that, I would still be naive. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's I guess there's good in everything, right? It's just a case of having to find find the positives. Uh, thank you for that, Taryn. It was great um, great to share there. Um, if I can come back to Birgit, um, could you possibly just elaborate a little bit more? I know you touched upon this earlier about some of the tips um, to get over and turn around failure and heart heartbreak into something more um, sort of positive that we can use to build momentum moving forward. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, a couple of the tips that I, I, I find there are three fundamental things that will help us turn around our failures and heartbreak and, and, and will result in us have, uh, winning in, in, in succeed and win, with us succeeding and winning um, and, and, and actually being able to live a wonderful, thriving life. And the first one is to decide. It's, it's all the, um, everything at the bottom line, it's take to us to decide that, um, uh, take to our decisions that we decide that, again, this is a feedback and not like uh, Terani say, it's going to be our permanent failure. And to decide that, um, just like you mentioned just now, Jess, um, to find that seed of good. We might not be able to see the good right now, but that's why it's um, Napoleon Hill says it's the seed of good. And it's up to us to decide that we're going to find the seed of good and plant the seed and grow the seed so we can harvest the much greater good in the future. And to decide that with uh, particularly when it comes to heartbreak and somebody betraying us that we're going to be better and not bitter, um, talking about failure and heartbreak and everything. Um, my background is um, actually in, in medicine. So I'm a, an oncologist and I entered this journey on becoming um, grief recovery and life success coach through heartbreaks and many, many failures. Um, nine different events happen all in two years. And so decide and commit to our decisions that were, that this is going to be feedback for our life and that we're going to commit to be better instead of bitter. And we're going to commit to it, that we're going to thrive and succeed regardless of what's happening um, in in uh, our past, uh, in our life, because that's just all feedback on how, like you said, we can be better. And then the other things, um, which is what um, uh, echoing what Numsa says, is to take actions. We know um, in intuitively what's best for our uh, ourselves. So we need to do the work and not asking other people to do the work uh, mm -hmm. because we can say all the time we want to be better, we want to recover. And this is one thing that the Grief Recovery Institute, which is um, the, uh, the um, a train, uh, uh, an evidence-based proven in the university study to help people with grief um, shows that it's really important for us to take the responsibility and to take the actions on us recovering and improving our life. We can't, I mean, uh, it, there is a, a saying, you can, um, even guts cannot move a park car <laughs> because um, uh, you, you got to take actions. Um, a lot of time nowadays, people do fissioning. Um, but just like Jim Carrey says in his Oprah's interview, you don't just fission and then go and sit on the couch or go and hide under the blanket. You need to take actions. You, need, you do what it is um, you know, that help your heart recover. You do like with you, I'm sure you take actions, uh, Terani, when, um, when things happen you take action such that you get out of the hole um, you got to get yourself out of the hole so take actions and even uh, sometimes it's tough to take actions when things are really tough but even if you crawl even if you have to crawl you crawl one step at a time and before you know it you'll be up Mount Everest and so we were the second thing is to take actions and then the other things that I always share with people is to allow to allow our um to to allow ourselves first of all to to face what's going on to accept what's going on and as Numsa say to let go of the attachment because a lot of time we are 
not only the loss itself that's um that caused us to grieve but when it's relationship and some other situations it's the attachments of we want this outcome but now it's not that outcome anymore so it's not just the failure but also the attachments to uh, to allow ourselves to feel it but also to allow ourselves to let go and say well something better can still come our way and then to allow ourselves to cry to rest to do what um best for us for some people i'm um, traveling around the world or even going on a holiday as you mentioned yes um for me it's um i take i usually um when i have i'm quite grieving i seems to have um to take three days straight where I just sit and cry. <laughs> I just like, I got to turn everything off. I'm just going to sit and cry for three days. And then after that, I, I, I seems to feel better. And so know what it is that you're, um, you, that feels good to you. And it's not like what your neighbors say and it's not your friends say, but what really feels good to you and, and just take care and be gentle to allow our, um, ourselves to sometimes when we're grieving, we say things and do things that we don't usually do and allow ourselves to make mistakes because we're human um, and particularly when we're grieving don't be demanding to ourselves we don't need to be tough all the time it's okay to be um, to so-called um, you know looking sad and looking um, and, and cry uh, cry is good for us and we conclude that by now cry can be good for us and, um, and uh, when we are grieving and then also to allow support um, uh, to allow guidance uh, because uh, from a good mentor and uh, from a, it's almost like you know if you're trying to uh, to um I actually don't know the UK very well, but if you're trying to drive, say, from Los Angeles to New York and you've never been there and you've never driven the route, um, then you know if you don't even have a map at all, then very good chance you're going to um to go the wrong way and you might end up in Mexico instead of in New York. So for um you know get a good coach, get um get a, a good mentor that will allow us to move through our tough time a lot easier and a lot faster. Yeah, absolutely. Some excellent, excellent stuff there that you shared. I love the uh, the three days of crying. Um, I think that's I think there's something beautiful um, beautiful about showing our own vulnerability as well to, to to others and actually showing that it's okay to uh to, to grieve um and give ourselves permission to to have that that moment of of self-grief and and crying and it's i think i think that's we're all human beings right we have emotions mm -hmm. and you know we're not uh, immune regardless of the fact that you know all the people here on this group we're all mentors educators influencers uh trying to help people uh, move forward in their lives, but we're still human beings ourselves. And I think that that's great acknowledgement. Really um, want to thank you for some of the stuff that you've shared there. I think there's some real um, nuggets, golden nuggets there for people um, to try to deal with uh, grief in a more positive way after listening to this, uh, this uh, program today. And we're not finished yet. We've still got more golden nuggets here to come. Um, Nomsa, if I can ask you to share how we move forward from a relationship perspective. Like, you know, how do we find uh, positive intention after a breakup or heartbreak in a relationship? Uh, like Tarin and Pickett, what they, they've covered is uh, basically you need to take action when things go wrong. Uh, it, the most important thing is to accept the situation and decide where you want to go from there. I think it's very, very, very important that... Uh, when you are faced with a breakup, if you want to have a intention, a positive intentions after that, clarify the emotion you find uncomfortable within yourself. You have to clarify it. Don't think about the cause because if you think about the cause, when you are working on yourself, you're going to end up blaming yourself and you're going to end up blaming the other person that even if they've wronged you, your focus should be, how do I get out of this rut? Like what Tarin was saying. Uh, if you think about the cause, you end up blaming and then you end up being stuck. So focus on the emotions that are uncomfortable, how to get out of them, understand the feelings, what the feelings is about. And face, face the answer that moment, don't avoid it. 
in your mind. Uh, it might come up as a feeling, whatever the, the emotions you are facing, if you want to confront them, they might come up as an image in your mind. As long as you know you worked out how to work with your mind, how your mind works and how your body works. So with those feelings of trying to getting out, it might, it might come as an image or sometimes it might come as a feeling. Uh, so then if it comes as a feeling or an image, Ask yourself, what is, the, what is the image about? What is the feeling about? Communicate with yourself and understanding that feeling because like sometimes myself, like I said, in my bathroom, you'll be surprised what goes on in my bathroom. It's not just cleaning teeth and having shower. I communicate with Nomsa, Nomsa's feelings. And keep going, when you are communicating with your feelings, communicating with those feelings, they keep going until you feel that feelings. When you feel that feeling that you're confronting, that you are facing, this is where it matters because you want to move on from that feeling. Whether if it's a bad feeling, it matters because you wanna, you wanna, you wanna move, you wanna move forward. Then you ask yourself. What is the outcome? What is the outcome are you looking for? So it's very, very important. Determine, determine the feeling. Are you looking for freedom from that pain? Or are you, do you want to stay in there? So it's very, very important to be specific of what you are looking for from that feeling. Once you have identified the feeling's intention, whatever it is, you will be surprised once you know how to work with your mind what you need to, it will reveal the things that you need to know about yourself because it, like Tarina was saying she was ripped off a uh, 60,000 pound but now she's a, a lovely woman a very successful woman if she had stayed in that rut blaming and blaming she wouldn't have been where she is today so when you understand the feelings you for, and then it will reveal who you are. When, it re, when the feeling reveals in relationship, it might reveal to you that you entered that relationship, there was something that you needed to learn, or there is something good that you've learned in that relationship. It will reveal the good tools or it will reveal the mistakes that you made yourself, not blaming. It's not about the other person you were in a relationship with, or it's not about the other person you're doing business with. The feeling will reveal about you what you where you need to go from there so it might say okay now things have gone wrong it might reveal the feeling that actually this is the next step that you need to take so it's very very important to focus and then connect with yourself and once that feeling is revealed you realize that you will no longer have to hold on to that negative thing that happened in the past because it's, it hits you when when things go wrong it just hits you like that like a car so it is it, it's, it's not easy it's a process if you are struggling don't say why is it not happening keep going keep trying until you get there don't give up because if you give up, it's easy for me to say, don't give up or don't do this. But if you keep going, find yourself like uh, 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 Bridget and Taryn was saying, find yourself a mentor. If you can't find a mentor, uh, find yourself a member of family that you trust that will hold you accountable. It, it's, it's, it's very, very easy that when you have someone that can support you, not put you down is very easy. When I started my business, it was it, it, the, the road was not easy. It was tough. Um, and then I met Lisa from matchmaking. She actually met me. She found me on LinkedIn and I found Des. To me, that was the solution for me moving forward with my business and forgetting the people that have ripped me off when I started my business saying I can build your website. I think I built my website three times. Uh, pay 500, someone says they can build my website. When the website is finished, nothing has happened. It's, it's, it's horrible. And then I go to somebody else. They say, oh, I've got experience. They show me the website that they've done in the past. And then I look at it, I'm like impressed. Then it's horrible. And then it, that's when I found Des, I was like, you know what, now I don't know, but I have to keep going. So show me what you have 
and Des produced my website, a good website for me that I'm really, really proud of. And everyone that goes on my website now, they give me a comment before we talk about business. They're like, by the way, your, your website is nice. That means I got there eventually, but the road was tough. So don't give up, keep going. Absolutely. Don't give up, keep going. Um, that is um, the advice that I think has been resonated overwhelmingly today from all of our experts. Um, it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel sad. Uh, it's okay to grieve, but uh, keep, keep, keep taking those small steps. And if you keep doing that, there's always, always light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, Tarani, if I can come to you, thank you for that, Nomsa. Uh, Tarani, if you can maybe shed some light on um, like how we can overcome grief from a, from a, from a business perspective, how can we move, how can we move forward? As I mentioned before, you need to learn from your past experience, but always ask yourself, knew what you knew now, what could you do differently? So for me, when I look back to my failed business or investments, what do I learn from that? The first thing is to be optimistic, paranoid. What does that mean? It means you can be optimistic. You know, there's plenty of opportunity out there. You trust people, like Nomsa said, this guy got a very nice website. He must be able to do the job for you. That one got plenty qualification, credential. Trust, but always double check. Be paranoid, always double check on that. And if anything too good to be true, it's always too good to be true. And sometimes we thinking, I, I got my shoulder chop off, finger burn, everything you can call it. Because I think it's too good to be true, but maybe this time is actually true. And it is find out that it's actually not. So if something sounds too good, again, double check and don't invest on anything that speculate. Speculation is not good. Do more research because it's the risk. Obviously, relationship, business, everything, we, there's an elements of the list, but we always need to calculate those risks, check and do more research on that. And always before you make decision, think of what would be the worst case scenario, the likely scenario and the best scenario. Obviously, we always think of the best and the likely. Can you live with the worst? Can you live if the worst thing happened of your relationship, of your business investment? Can you live with that? If you say that you can, then okay, that is, you know, quite safe for you to go on at least because you prepare that this would be, this might be the worst case that it would happen. And always ask every investment, what would be, what security would you get? Would the company give you the personal guarantee on your investments? And if they do, always double check more as well. Okay, you guarantee for my 100,000 pound investments. What asset do you have? Maybe they said, I got 2 million pound. Great, but how many people you actually give out that personal guarantee? They might give out another 100, so that's 200 you know, two million pounds is not going to cut it, it's not going to be covered. So always asking for security and digging more, digging more until you satisfy with that. Follow your gut instinct. It's always tell you something. If you're not feeling right about this person or this scheme, something telling you that this is not right. And if I'm going to keep the main things that helping me and save me from many you know, failure investments or deal with people that I'm not in line with is always choose to work with someone you can trust. Trust is the big things because at the end of the day, business is just transaction. So if things gone wrong, they don't care less, you just the number. But if someone come and invest with me, for me, everything is personal because we not only deal with the money transaction, we deal with the personal 
person in front of you, their children, their grandchildren. So we have a lot of responsibility to take on. I always taking investor on as the personal level. I always see them as my, you know, friend and family. And this is make the difference from other investor because you need to taking people on at that personal level. At end of, of the day, obviously everything is involved in risk. But because we're taking people on as a personal level, things gone wrong, but I will always find a way to honor my agreement, my commitment, because you cannot let your family down. You cannot let your friend down. So it's not just a business transaction. So always deal the business with people that you can trust. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that insight, Tarani. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I think that wraps up our session for today. Um, there's so many golden nuggets that our panelists have uh, shared uh, with us today. Um, uh, many things have been shared. I'll just mention a few that I've made a note of. It's mm -hmm. cry, find that little corner. Mm -hmm. uh, Bridget said three days nonstop crying and she's good. She's <laughs> good again. So maybe that's something that uh, we can try. Um, confide in people. And this is across the board, right? This doesn't matter whether it's relationships, mm -hmm. business. Um, you know, these are generic concepts which we can use uh, and apply them in every area of our life. So what is it for you that you can take from some of the advice that's been shared today and help to make, uh, make, uh, ha make you take that next step forward in your career, in your business, in your relationship? Gratitude is something that's been mentioned today. It's so important to start your day being uh, grateful for being alive, for breathing, for oxygen, for having eyelashes. People don't have eyelashes, right? People mm. have arms and legs, and yet they're, they're so happy. They're, they're, they're so grateful to be alive. So there's so much that we can be grateful for. I think gratitude is massive. It's so, you know, if I don't, if, if one day goes, goes by with I, where I haven't actually showed some gratitude uh, to God, to the universe for the blessings that I have, I feel like that day is unfilled and unfulfilled. Mm. Well, it's the same for everyone else here as well. Um, just give yourself a break was another point that was mentioned, right? Give yourself a break. You know, be easy on yourself. Mm. You're a human being. You have emotions. Um, and decide that this is feedback and not failure. Mm. Um, you know, and crawl. I love the the uh, the quote that, um, Birgit, you mentioned earlier on about crawling one step at a time and you, you'll eventually reach Mount Everest, the top of Everest. Okay, so it's 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 a it's a marathon, not a sprint. Maybe another way of putting it. So you just take it one step at a time. Um, and I love what Tarani said there at the end about following your gut instinct. Mm. Follow your gut instinct. Your heart will tell you, uh, you know, if this relationship or this business deal uh, is not, you know, is not, you know, is not the right move for you. Um, and obviously, apply due diligence, do your research, do whatever it takes to make sure that you are looking after number one. Um, and I think that's something that's so important. I mean, I'm working with um, a client at the moment. She's going through a very painful separation in her marital uh, relationship. And um, I think the challenge for her is finding the balance. And we've been through this where either we're grieving too much and gets to the point where we're feeling sorry for ourselves and we're almost subconsciously seeking sympathy from others as well. All we're looking for is people to validate our, our sadness and tell us how, how much we've been wronged. But there comes a point, and this is where I've had to help her shift her mindset a little bit. There comes a point where she needs to move away from that and say, right, now the buck stops with you. Mm, what are you yeah. going to do? What, you know, if your finances are not right, then you need to find out, take responsibility about your money and find out what is going on with your finances. If the relationship isn't working and you've tried everything, you've tried so many different angles, then maybe it's time for you to look at getting out of that relationship. Um, and we can use that. We can use that that method and that principle in every area of our life. Um, and if I even if I look at my own life, you know, everything went pear shaped for me all at once. I got sacked. I was broke. You know, my relationship, my marriage was on the brink of divorce. All in the same go, right? And you know, for me, I'm just so blessed that you know I had uh, you know someone who helped me. You know, a coach, a mentor who helped me free out of his own time because I was broke. I couldn't pay him. Um, but you know, he, he gave me his time whenever he could give me five, 10 minutes on the phone. He helped me, he made me realize how many things I had to be grateful for and how I could use my experience to help propel other people. 
So there's, 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 you know, it's not grief. It's not, you know, it's not failure. It's all feedback. And I hope that, uh, you know, there's, there's at least, at least one thing that you guys have taken from this session today, which will help you to move forward and have a more uh, uplifting mindset, a more growth based, uh, growth based mindset for this new year, for this new, new uh, decade. Um, thank you once again to our guests. Um, I just want to ask you guys if there's any final words you want to share. Bridget, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we before we close? Yeah, I would say, to, um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, we all want to thrive. We all want to win and to uh, want to thrive. And for me, to thrive is to allow and to take actions, which is back to what we talked earlier. Excellent. And I thank you for have, having me. It's such an honor to be able to share with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Nomsa, any any cl closing uh, comments, thoughts? Um, I would just say, uh, whenever you're going through something or relationship or business or any anything, just ask yourself, is every mountain worth to climb? Just ask yourself that question because you may find that some mountain is some things are not worth it to to grieve over. And you may find that you are worth more than you realize. And you may find that the universe has something better in store for you. So like you say, uh, Bridget has a quote there. If you believe in yourself, anything is possible. So ask yourself that. That's all I want to leave you with. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you there. Thank you, Nomsa, for those closing comments. And Tarani, anything you would like to share as, as closing? Um, just briefly, only work with people that you like, trust, and have their value and their belief in life with you. Simple as that. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you once again to our panelists. Thank you to our viewers. Um, and please share. Um, the uh, the knowledge, the wisdom that's been uh, here for you today, been, uh, you know, th this this platform is here for for people so that we can share wh whatever we've learned and our experiences, so that it can help to bring betterment, bring positive uh, uh, kind of results in other people's lives. So please share this, share with your contacts, with your friends, and until uh, next time, stay blessed, everyone. Peace be upon you all. Bye now. Bye. Thank you. Grace. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.